Castle Doom. It has been three weeks since the death of our beloved Sheriff Stephen Strange. God himself meets with his chief science officer, aka his daughter, Valeria. The daughter did her best, but she is nowhere closer to finding the rebels that are accused of murdering God Doom's hand. Even the bodies of Corvus Glaive and Proxima Midnight, brought to them by Baron Apocalypse, still does not yield any answers. The Black Swan joins their meeting and corrects the daughter of God. These two are husband and wife, she states. They are the surviving members of the Black Order, the generals of the tyrant, Thanos. Through the Swan's memory, we discover that after the great battle, everyone was scattered, but the Black Swan made her way to Castle Doom. And now, she feels at home. Hours later, the Foundation, Valeria contacts her team. She informs them that something isn't right. She feels like she is being lied to. The subject changes as Alex informs her of a breakthrough. They finally found the source of God Doom's power, and Valeria is standing on it. The news does not end there as her team continues to inform her on more strange drones found in their land. Six more. Further studies suggest that these drones are looking for something. Valeria can't help herself but wonder. Who is building these things? Somewhere inside Battleworld, the drones have come home to their maker, Reed Richards, one from the 616 reality and the other from the Ultimate Universe. These drones have been instrumental in collecting data. They now have a better understanding of this strange world and the full capabilities of Victor Von Doom, who now calls himself a god. The maker has set loose one of his projects, who he calls the Prophet. This man has gathered non-believers that grew into an army, a legion of doom deniers who now marches towards his throne and the world tree. The Maker seeks a plan to kill their foe, but Reed is not ready to consider that yet. Our problem as I see it, is determining how Victor Von Doom came to possess such power. Reed Richards, our hero from the 606, has a plan and he already got his best people working on it. Castle Doom, Miles Morales and Peter Parker arrives at the spot indicated to them by a device created by Reed Richards. They found the exact spot but nothing is here, except the statue. It could be underground. Actually, there's a trap door. Valeria pops out behind the shadows. I found it earlier. You're looking for the source too, aren't you? Parker is shocked, but no spider sense. They are not in danger. He knows this kid, but things are different here, and Valeria has no clue as to who he is. When asked if she is coming with them, she tells the two spider heroes that she spent the last hour thinking about it, but she can't. At the end of the day, Valeria is just a kid and if she discovers that her father isn't who he says he is, then, well, that's just too much for a kid to comprehend. Valeria allows them to pass, but they must answer one question to keep her silence. Did you or anyone on your team kill Stephen Strange? Parker replies, no. Of course not. Inside, the heroes found a blinding white room and a man Parker identifies as Owen Reese, the Molecule Man. Reese has information to share, but he is hungry. Unfortunately, Parker doesn't have any food, but wait, Morales does. He brings out a hamburger from his pocket. The sight of a burger causes Reese to salivate. He must have that burger. Parker questions Morales as to how he obtained the burger. Morales states that he got that from home, his home, before the incursion. So that's an 8 year and 3 week old burger? I don't think suspended animation counts. Oh man, I don't think he should be eating that. <laughs> so good. After he devoured the burger, Reese is presented with a question. Where can they find the source of Doom's power? Reese states, Oh yes, you're looking at him. Castle Doom. Meeting after meeting, God Doom grows weary. He now meets with some of his barons. They bring news of a man who caused uprisings throughout Battleworld known as the Prophet. This man raised an army large enough that entire kingdoms are betting to his will. Apocalypse shares his counsel. Only the strong shall survive. Power structures must be maintained. God Doom is among us. Anyone who say otherwise is an offense. Only the loyal shall live. Kill the rest. Doom agrees with his counsel, but instead of sending in his private police force of Thors, God Doom demands that you, his loyal barons shall tend to this pretender and his mob, for Doom is losing what little grace he still possesses. The meeting adjourns and Baron Sinister returns to speaking to one of the heroes from the 616. Captain Marvel is his guest and the two of them will build an alliance to usurp Doom's throne. The hidden island of Agamotto, T'Challa, and Namor finally arrives at their destination. They brave through the World Sea, the Great Leviathan Horde, and the hidden isle itself to be able to reach Stephen Strange's sanctuary. With the Eye of Agamotto, they gain access through. 
Suddenly, the face of Stephen Strange appears, but it's only a sentry. It prepares the death traps to test the ex-kings of Atlantis and Wakanda for being friends or foe. They pass a set of tests, so the sentry offers them two of the most valuable artifacts owned by Stephen Strange. The first one is a Siege Courageous. This object of power can transport them to anywhere they wish to go. The second item is Stephen's most precious possession, an item that might be the only thing on this world that can smite a god. Stephen Strange presents an Infinity Gauntlet. Elsewhere, a young Franklin is tucked into bed by his mother, Susan. He requests for a bedtime story, his favorite story, a story of the Fantastic Four. Susan recalls a time when there were four of them. Her brother, Johnny Storm, their friend, Ben Grimm, her father, Dr. Franklin Storm, and herself. They set on what they thought was going to be an incredible journey, but their ship crashed and they emerged with incredible power. They protected the Earth, but one day, their world ended and this new world began. It was a cruel and dark world. War plagued every corner, but there was hope. A brilliant and blinding light. It was Franklin's father, Victor Von Doom. He made a world from nothing, and he made a world that is everything. Dr. Franklin Storm died before the light's arrival, but Johnny Storm became the sun which brought light onto this wonderful world. And Ben, well Ben Grimm is a story for another day, for when you are older. The story ends and the mother kisses her son goodnight. Elsewhere on the shield, detention level, the thing Ben Grimm chats with their prisoner, a man found on the wall who calls himself Thanos. The Mad Titan informs Grimm that this world is not what it should be, and that Ben Grimm's service to God Doom is a sham. Where he came from, Grimm is the closest friend of Doom's greatest enemy. Ben has shamed him time and time again. Doom is a petty usurper of powers far grander than himself. Doom convinced Johnny Storm to be the sun, and Ben Grimm to be on the wall. Not for service to the people Doom watches over, but because God fears him. Doom convinced you to live on your knees. He has beaten you as you lay there. The Titan states. Are you just going to die here? Or are you going to stand up? With those words, Ben Grimm, the thing, obliterates the shield, the wall that separates the horrors and nightmares away from Doom's land. Ben Grimm made a decision. He will stand. What's going on guys? Welcome to Comic Island. My name is Joy and holy cow, this was a super long issue. So many things happened and I want to go over it with you guys. So in the last issue, we saw a glimpse of the Black Swan fighting her way to Doom's castle. That was such a huge tease and we saw where that led us. For those who don't know, before the incursion, Doom was also a god and known as Rabu Malal and his followers are these black swans sent through the multiverse to do his bidding. This one is the only one left so it's no surprise that she gives her full loyalty to Doom. At one point she says, I am home, my lord. That is so awesome. If you guys followed Hickman's new Avengers run, you guys may know what this woman went through, and now she is finally here by her god's side. There isn't anyone in Battleworld that would worship Doom as a god more than this one, in my opinion. We also got some great chemistry in this issue. A lot of characters are paired up, such as the two Richards, the two Spider-Man, and we also got T'Challa and Namor. Heck, even Proxima Midnight and Corvus Glaive are paired up. Uh, I guess. <laughs> but let's discuss the two Richards. I feel the tension between these guys. I don't think they ever met before, but you got two sides of a coin. One's a maniac, and the other is a hero that only wants to find his family and protect his friends. So shortly after, we got one of the best comedic relief segments I've read in the entire Secret Wars run. This conversation about the 8-year-old hamburger between Parker and Morales was priceless. This is how I pictured Parker and Morales talking and Jonathan Hickman did a great job bringing that to life. Then we got a pairing between T'Challa and Namor. If you have been following comics ever since the Avengers vs X-Men, then you will remember how Namor pretty much destroyed Wakanda. These two have been at each other's throats ever since. T'Challa even did something I never thought he would do. I believe it's near the end of Hickman's new Avengers run when we saw T'Challa purposely sending Namor to his death. That was so cold and I loved it. But this is one thing that I didn't like about this issue. Their alliance is too tamed for me. I really enjoyed their rivalry and I wanted that to continue. You got the King of Atlantis warring with the King of Wakanda, two royalty figures at each other's throats. That makes for some great storytelling. But they seem to have buried the hatchet. Maybe now that T'Challa has the gauntlet, the first thing he would do is torture Namor? <sighs> One can only dream. <laughs> Okay, so we got a huge insight into Battleworld's past and God Doom's family. So Susan tells a bedtime story which feels more like a history of what happened. 
From how she explains it, I believe that this Susan Storm, Johnny Storm, and Ben Grimm are from a random universe where the fourth member is their father, Franklin Storm. This isn't the members of the Fantastic Four we know, so that begs the question, where are the original Fantastic Four? Where are Reed's true family? So at the end, we finally found out where the thing is the entire time. But remember guys, this isn't the thing from the 616. Or maybe he is? <laughs> I can't even tell anymore. <laughs> So over at the S.H.I.E.L.D. tie-in, we saw the thing, but I never gave it a second thought. This world has so many incarnations of different characters that it gets confusing. But anyway, I loved it how Thanos convinced Ben Grimm to leave the wall. If you haven't done so yet, I recommend picking up the S.H.I.E.L.D. tie-in. It goes over the conversation with Grimm and Thanos in detail. This is somewhat of a spoiler, so if you're planning to read the S.H.I.E.L.D., turn down your volume for about 20 seconds or so. Okay, you guys still with me? Well, as you guys may know, Ben Grimm stood up and left. But in the S.H.I.E.L.D. tie-in, we find out that Grimm is the S.H.I.E.L.D. He covers miles of the wall. He is everywhere and nowhere. He gets enlightened by a weapon developed by Da Vinci, and because of that, he can see that Thanos isn't lying. We now have a pissed off Ben Grimm who knows that Doom is a false god. He is also marching towards Castle Doom saying, It's clobbering time. <laughs> That's so good. So I hope that makes it a bit more clear for you guys who don't read the tie-ins. With everything going on, Doom is going to have a really rough time. It seems that everyone is gunning for him. The wall is breached and you got three different forces marching to kill everything. So for Doctor Doom fans, this story arc is basically for you. Secret Wars is basically a story about Doctor Doom. I never made a top 10 villains of all time, but I would like to think that if Doctor Doom was on there, from reading this series, Doctor Doom would have climbed up a couple of spots for sure. But that's just my opinion, now I want to hear from you. What do you think about Secret Wars issue 6? And how do you feel about Doctor Doom after reading this series so far? Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and I'll see you next time in another Secret Wars video.